Hello everybody, welcome to part two of my Intel RealSense T265 video series. And in this series, what we're doing is we're creating some robot skills instead of the ARC software for autonomous navigation and waypoint navigation. So the uh, robot that we're using is an Easy Robot Adventure Bot and we very fancy <laughs> zip tied the uh, T265 to the front of the robot and we have of course three distance sensors and if you want to watch part one of this series to get an idea how we programmed the robot to be able to um, use the distance sensors and submit that data to the navigator skill I'd suggest watching that. We're going to use the project that we started with yesterday on part one of this video series so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the robot down on the ground so that we can have a reference point of where it's going to start and stop as we do navigation. So we're using the corner of these two tiles, which makes a good reference point for us to be able to see where the robot started. And when we tell it to come back, hopefully it comes back to where it's supposed to go. Let's connect to the robot and start up the camera for the robot. There we go. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start up the Intel RealSense driver, which is going to start pushing data into this skill, which is called the navigator. This is the one that we're working with. The little red dots that are appearing here, if you watched part one of the series, you'll remember that that's from ultrasonic distance sensor data. So we're not really caring about that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how we can make the robot go into a few different waypoints. So what we'll do is I'm going to click on the screen and just random locations. We can drive the robot around and figure out what these waypoints are. But for the time being right now, we're just going to add a waypoint here, add a waypoint here, and then we're going to add a waypoint back at the beginning. So we can zoom in, get a better view of what we're looking at. And one of the things you'll notice is that when I click on any of the waypoints, they'll highlight because we can reorganize these waypoints by right clicking. We can edit them. We can go to a specific one or we can push the start button and go to all of them. So let's demonstrate going to all of them. So it's going to go in the order from where it is currently right now in this yellow to zero to one and back to two. <laughs> My USB cable getting in the way a little bit here. And there we are, back to the starting point. This is great. Okay, let's do it one more time. This is going to demonstrate that we follow the same path as the last time. And that we make it back to the beginning again. All right, and there we have it. Okay, now what we can do inside of the, uh, the waypoint here is that we can swap these. So for example, we can swap zero and one. So now if we were to play this back, it's gonna go from where it currently is to zero, then to one and back to two. So let's watch that happen. Excellent. Now, because this skill is connected to movement panels, any movement panel at all can be controlled using this. So you can use a drone or a humanoid or a hexapod. It doesn't matter. It'll just control that particular movement panel. Uh, to demonstrate one step further, let's use speech recognition. What we'll do here is we're going to tell the speech recognition system go to zero and these are going to go to different waypoints that we have saved right now they're numerical waypoints based upon the index but we're going to have that changed pretty soon go to waypoint zero we'll make another one here called go to one and we'll select number one 
and go to 2. And this particular 2 is going home. So why don't we have the robot speak and speak out of its easy B and say, I am coming home. And then we will tell it to go to 2. OK, let's give it a shot. Go to 0. Go to 1. And I guess from a usability standpoint, we can still go into the speech recognition system and change this from go to 2 and make it come home. <laughs> come home. I don't know if you heard that, but the robot spoke and said, I'm coming home. Go to zero. So if we really wanted, we can pretend that zero was the kitchen. So we can change this to go to kitchen. And then we can change number one to go to bed. And there, let's try that. Go to bed. Come home. <laughs> I love hearing the robot say, I'm coming home. Oh, we're chewing up the cable here slowly. <laughs> Let's fix this. There we go. So the neat part about this is I can move the robot anywhere at all in the room, and I can still get to any of these locations. And then we're going to tell the robot to go someplace. Go to bed. Come home. Go to kitchen. You see we interrupted it halfway and told it to start going someplace else. Go to bed. Come home. <laughs> so combining what we have now with um, a variety of distance sensors as well. You can start seeing that the actual room is starting to map itself out. And this is actually really interesting to see because this is all happening with only three ultrasonic distance sensors. So these are nothing fancy. These are a dollar or two dollars a piece. You can see that we're getting actually a pretty decent layout of what the room looks like. The more we drive the robot around, the larger map will make. Now, if you're going to be navigating in, a, in your home or someplace often, you're probably going to want a LiDAR for much better resolution than what you're getting out of these little sensors. But it's pretty neat to see how the navigation messaging system, the NMS of ARC, works by allowing different sensors to contribute data to create the map and using localization, for example, from the T265. You can also use a variety of other different localization systems like the IPS, the Indoor Positioning System, and you can display this data as well using a SLAM system. So that's it for this video, part two of the series. Stay tuned for part three because we have some pretty cool stuff coming up next.